Bring geese and nerds from the universe number in my inner We're going back into the realm of the comic book generation here to talk about a very kind of underrated and new and utilized character, but who made quite an epic comeback in the realms of movies and also video games. Miles Morales. For those of you that don't know, Miles Morales is technically in some evo evolutions of Spider Man, he's technically the second, although some people would say like he's probably the fourth or fifth generation of Spider-Man after, like, Ben Riley and Kane. But, yes, we are talking about Miles Morales. Miles was created by Brian Michael Bendis, who, if some people probably have a love him, have a love him or hate him type of, type of relationship. But, I don't really know about Bendis, but I do know about his infamous history from working on comic books where he makes a lot of fans very angry. But, you probably have heard of Miles, through the, through the way the movie with the infamous, into, from infamous Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, from 2018, and in the infamous sequel that I have already reviewed earlier this year, hint, hint, wink, wink, that you can go and check out. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. We're gonna be talking. I'm sorry about that too. But we're gonna be talking about not the movies that Miles was into. Although, if you want me to review Into the Spider Verse, just let me know and I'll review that because hell yeah, I love that movie. But Miles was created basically about 2014 and to 2015, basically was in that time er era. And I remember hearing about him when I was in middle school and kind of being turned against the young man and the young character. Up until I saw Into the Spider-Verse, where I knew that I could trust this young man. So anyways, we're taking a look at two scholastic books based on the character. Shockwaves and... <clears throat> Shockwaves and also Stranger Ties. So, here's one thing though that kind of pisses me off is that these are just called a Spider-Man graphic novel but with Miles' name printed across it. So, yeah, people still are against calling Miles Spider-Man. Yeah, Miles has earned that name himself for the things that he's done in the realm of comp in the realm of everything that he's been doing. Uh, and especially, yes, I've seen Spidey and his amazing friends, and calling him Spin pisses me off more than you can know. They can even call him Kid Spider or Spider Kid, but no, they just decided to go with sp Spin. Anyways, we're going to be taking a look at both of these, but we're going to start things off with Miles Morales Shock, Miles Morales Shockwave, and then work our way down to Miles Morales Stranger Tides. As such, let's dive right into Miles Morales Shockwave, and also this was written by the same writer and drawn by the same artist, so I don't really have to say anything to say there, and see just how the great Miles Morales became the great Miles Morales in both of these books and their own spin and take on the character. So let's start with Shockwave. Okay, so first things first, I really do like this cover. The hope symbol in the background for his for Hispanic uh, people. Miles running with his Spider-Man mask and kind of an iconic costume upon rooftops. It's kind of a great Great scene with also the symbol of Spider-Man down below. So again, really great scene to see in this film. Anyways, we open up truthfully with Miles swinging around New York City as he had been Spider-Man for some quite a time and he's actually wearing the costume that he just is known for. The classic red with the classic black with the red outlines on it. It's good stuff. As he talks about how he's been Spider-Man and how everything had been going for him and how he's been basically safe. Saving New York City after he'd been bitten by the radioactive spider. <clears throat> but Miles' own little adventure is ruined by two characters, Viz and Trinity. Two mutants, metahumans, never really explained. But they're also a, vil a villainous group called the Renegade. So, yeah, I don't know much about these two characters, so I can't really explain much about them. The two get into a 
get into a small dispute with Miles and ends up taken away via a motorcycle. Miles tries to chase after them, but eventually he starts to lose them, knowing that he has to get back home to his own, fam to his own family. The, as we see Miles' family, Jeff, and also his mother, Rio. See, this is what makes Miles so special, the fact that he is basically African-Hispanic. His mother, I believe, is Puerto Rican, and his father is African-American, so he shares a so he shares a relationship in between the two, the two family members that he ends up having. It's a nice little touch trying to show you just how relatable that Miles can be to some people that basically grow up with the Hispanic background. So, you know, it's a nice little touch. As the family tried to sit down and eat dinner, it was Jeff's turn to cook, which is not exactly very so happy, as Miles t takes off. For whatever his own reason is, as his father tried to give him a grab bag to give to his friend Gunky. And if people are wondering, yes, basically Ned is made off of Gunky from the Tom Holland film. As if they have quite an nostalgic touch. Duffed, mild, barely touched his plate. Hold up, you. You barely touched your plate either, Rio. Uh, yeah, about that. I think my phone's ringing. I'll be back. Very funny. My purple pork shop tastes great. Yeah, the problem is Rio still doesn't forgive Jeff after the last meal that he decided to cook for them, as it was a pretty unforgettable meal for everybody at that, at that point in time. So, <laughs> yeah, we don't want to remember what happened at the last meal that Jeff cooked. Anyhow, Miles ends up finding Viz, I think, not Trinity, as he decides to give chase to the to the young criminal, chasing her down, trying to figure out where she where she's going, and oh no, for a uh, fight scene that's basically drawn, it's honestly pretty good. As Miles ends up stopping her while she crashes her bike, but we have to remember Viz had superpowers. She's able to shoot laser beams out of her fist, or it's on it blast, kind of like Havoc. As the two end up fighting, then nothing gets done, as she's ended up saved by Trinity, who has the ability to transport herself via purple energy. As Mayu meets up with his friend Gunky and another friend named Kyle, whose father just happens to be an expert on basically anything and everything technology. So, yeah, but Kyle's actually doing something secrecy while her father is basically doing something secrecy as well. So, Kyle tried to do her own research while at the same time, Miles and Gunky tried to do their own thing about where this crystal came from and why is it so important to both Viz and Trinity. As Miles decides, hey, I'm gonna tra track down Kyle, so he follows her to the, to the museum, to a place called Research Pods, to, so he can find out if he found her. Which, by the way, he attached a spider tracer onto a jacket so he could catch her while he was invisible following her around. Not important because I'm trying to get through this thing as quickly as possible, as he realizes that Kyle's not there. But thus, he ends up running into the, into the young Kyle, and trying to, that she's trying to basically do her own research while at the same time so is Miles. Miles and Genki banter that there's something much up with this and that there must be a burglar involved somewhere behind there. They even think something bad about Kyle, but that maybe she's a burglar that's working alongside of, of the forces of evil. So Miles shoots up and goes after her, which he ends up basically running into her as Spider-Man and trying to basically interrogate her, sort of Batman style. So, think of that scene from the Tom Holland film. Uh, it's kind of funny considering that Aaron Davis first appeared in that film and he's also Miles' uncle. Well, anyway, anyway, Miles and Kyle basically talk and she discusses that her father were talking in code, seeing that behind the, the criminal activity, is both Viz and Trinity, which, by the way, for the LGP, LGGP, LGTPQ people, um, yeah, they're supposed to be a couple, according to this comic, and they also end up being the, the one behind this, <clears throat> ending one of the chapters. Going forward, Miles and Kyle keep talking about what's going on, including her showing that there is uh, something that is a fun type for kids that are 
offer free ice cream. Miles and the Simpsons more up with this, so he decides to call a couple friends. Kamala Khan and Squirrel Girl, Dorian Day. Uh, this is also a tie-in to another book where the two of them appear in, so, um... Yeah, kind of weird to be reading this book and then seeing Dorian Day and Ms. Marvel. Ms. Marvel makes sense because she appears in Challengers, but Squirrel Girl, I, I can't recall a moment where they appeared together and was a squirrel tippy toes. Cause that's the thing. As the two found out that Terra Jean isn't a woman, it's short for Terra Jin. As they thought that this is a Terra Jin crystal, which can release Terra Jin myth that turns people into inhumans. Against this factor, Miles decides to go and hunt them down, as Kyle wants to help him. But, uh, Miles is reluctant to, because, according to the comic, he might have a crush on Kyle. Never really explain. So, fast forward in a little bit, he runs back into vi- in the Vids and Trinity. The two of them get into a little spick and span, and of course, as Miles basically comes up on top. But trying to stop them so they don't accidentally release the Terrigen Crystal and release the Terrigen Myth, that could possibly do something. And what's also funny is that Viz here throws a Hadouken. Just had to point that out because it's kinda hysterical. But yeah, I have to credit that the art in here is actually pretty damn decent for the most part, and that Vids and Trinity are working for a bigger bad guy. His name? I don't know. But he wants to destroy Puerto Rico, but Miles will not let that happen since he has family in Puerto Rico, as I mentioned earlier. So Miles ends up taking down the big the big bad criminal, also Vision Trinity, but we'll later on see them in the upcoming book, basically. But yeah, Miles does a pretty good job kidnap capturing the criminal, saving Kyle's dad, and the rest of the story is basically that of good. But Miles contemplates if what he did is the right thing, as he reads a postcard from his abuela saying that she's hoping that he can come and meet her. As pointed out here, this is small note to let you know we're always thinking of you always. Can't wait to take you on one of our favorite places of all time, of all the island, El Uinqua. I'm hoping I said that right, if not, I apologize to any and all Hispanic fans of mine. <clears throat> But Miles decides that he knows what to do for his art project, to make a mural. Making a mural that says hope as we saw in the beginning for Puerto Rico, as they are going through some hardships right now, as he and his family and Gonky celebrate this occasion as Miles had saved the day and saved his family down in Puerto Rico. Miles Morales' shockwave is easily the better story, trying to give us that vibe that Miles was once um, or not was once, but basically is a Hispanic kid, that, that he is basically part Puerto Rican because his mother comes from Puerto Rico, and that he still has family there, so it's nice to kind of get this involved, especially since the illustrator of this book, Pablo Leon, I believe would be Hispanic himself, I don't know, I've never seen any pictures of the, of the guy, but nice little story that basically gets inside with the other side of Miles Morales, something that the... M Something that the film across the Spider-Verse would try to get across with us is that Miles and his mother, basically, in that relationship, and also him trying to basically go inside with his Hispanic side. So, nice touch, and also really good. So, next up, we're going to deal with Miles Morales' Stranger Tides, as it's introduced to the villain that either just was created for this book, or a villain in the Marvel Universe that I know nothing about. So anyways, let's dive into Miles Morales' Stranger Ties and see just how strange that this book can really get. Talking about the cover, this cover is absolutely gorgeous. Miles swinging around in the iconic fighter suit, holding his mask, and of course swinging around, which is, okay, this is New York City, somebody who has probably seen his secret identity, with his Spider-Man emblem in the back, referencing the 66th scene. 66 cartoon, which is always awesome, with the Avengers and Iron Man down below. For whatever that reason is, I cannot tell you, but pretty good cover, same like the other one. We open up with Miles Morales going to a party of some sort in a very snazzy suit. So, yeah, Miles basically goes and vi and visits your woman, taking her out because he can, because he's Miles Morales. He's an all-time superhero, and he takes her to a celebrity wrestling match? 
What? And Maya would end up running into Trinity, who basically kidnaps him and takes him away. <laughs> Trinity, aboard her ship outside of outside of space basically tells Miles that there's something going on, an alien type of invasion that they know nothing about. People end up becoming frozen and then turning against each other, brother fighting against brother, sister fighting against sister, that sort of thing. And also that basically Trinity is very worried about what's going on. And Trinity happens to point out to Miles that it's because of a person named The Stranger. I don't know if he was invented for this book or not, but The Stranger. I know nothing about this character at all. So, yeah. The stranger's going around freezing people and turning them against each other as sort of his master plan. They have the world turn against one another, and then he can come right in and conquer it very easily. Trinity tells Miles that he should be worried because he might be coming to Earth, and it's up to Miles to try to stop him. And also, Trinity tells Miles that he can use technology to do this. Knowing that, Miles and Gunky go straight over to Kyle's house that we met in... No, I book Shockwaves, and we find out that Kyle is frozen, not able to not able to move while looking at her laptop. As the two of them are very confused and concerned about what's going on, and this <clears throat> and what's going on, and how close to that the stranger could be. Miles is talking to Gunky, who happens to be staying over at his place where in Iron Man pajamas, and we find out that both Viz and Trinity are actually working for the stranger. So, the whole talk that Trinity did with Miles was probably not to save people, but probably just to have him know that the stranger's coming. Because he's like that, apparently. The greatest super villain in the world, apparently, according to this comic. In a touching scene, however, we end up learning that Miles' his uncle, Aaron, that yes, we know that he had a very close relationship to, actually got into a car wreck because he accident because he got frozen, and there's no telling if he will pull out of it and survive, which of course makes an emotional moment for Miles since he shares a very huge bond with that of his uncle Aaron. He's a hype. he basically idolizes him, he's his childhood hero, he's everything to him, and this moment basically made him break down and realize what's going on and the weight of the situation, which is a nice touch. But later, the stranger himself makes his debut ap appearance while talking on a video, and I have to do this because this is very true. Greetings, humans. I am the keeper of the balance and order in the multiverse. I travel through space and time, examining each and every planet. And at last, I'm here on Earth. You have found the most deficient of mind, body, and in spirit. Fear not, for I come bearing hope. Not all is lost. Only half of you will be programmed. Do not resist. You pro have my promise that this is discipline, while I severe will be, be all, ought to be <coughs> swift. I believe in justice, goodness, and mercy, qualities that humans seem to only care about. So he's bringing a reckoning to New York City, yes. So while out trying to do some investigating, Miles accidentally gets his butt kicked. Yeah, basically he runs into runs in, in, into Viz with some other henchmen that basically knocks his ass out. But they're actually stopped and introduced and interrupted by another character who I'm not going to talk about here because that's kind of spoilers. If you want to, just pick the book up yourself, truthfully. So after being brought back to life, Miles realizes that his best friend Gunky is not okay. He's actually been frozen, which is Miles' worst fear that ends up happening to him. What's more, that Miles goes around his own house trying to figure out where everybody is and realizing that his own father and mother have been frozen too which freaks Miles right out, but it's not an impactful moment like his uncle, which kind of bothered me a little bit. More on that later, though. Miles teams up with another metahuman, whose identity I'm going to keep a secret for this, and he ends up running into Viz again, who actually they have another fight with each other with two, as Trinity ends up basically invoking and telling Viz to knock it the hell off, that the two of them can live happily ever after if they escape from the stranger and that Miles is actually trying to help, he's not actually a villain, as even Viz points out that this is not okay at all and that they shouldn't betray the stranger. 
So, my old ends up talking with the stranger who basically wants to bring, like I said in the main voice, a reckoning to New York City and turn people against each other. My old, of course, will not have it as he's the protector of New York City, kicking the ass of the stranger, not only just by himself, but actually using Viz and Trinity, who ends up turning against them because he was trying to turn Viz and Trinity against each other, which, like I said, they're basically a lesbian couple, question mark, according to this comic. So after defeating the stranger, or seemingly defeating the stranger, Viz and Trinity go on living in happiness, and Miles' family is all okay, including his uncle Aaron, and including Kyle with her own father. And Miles goes around knowing that basically people can change, and that also he has a very strange impact upon people. After all, stranger things have happened. Dude, you almost gave me a heart attack. Question. Do you always talk to yourself out loud when no one is listening, or is it just a special occasion? Um... Better question, why are you eavesdropping? Let me guess, you're afraid to play a video game without me there for protection. Well, don't worry, I got you. Miles Morales' Stranger Ties is the weaker one of the story. Yeah, they try to do something like give Miles a Guardian of the Galaxy level threat to deal with, but it's not done in the same way as some other projects or films have, have done. This isn't quite upon the same volume as basically Spider-Man trying to take on Mysterio and save the entire world while doing so in Far From Home. So there is no, basically nothing there. The better story, in my opinion, is Shockwaves, because it ties into Miles' background as being a Hispanic character while trying to basically save an attack going on Puerto Rico, where he has his family, including his abuela, which is Spanish for grandmother. So, I have to say that basically you can check both of these out, but I would mostly recommend checking out Chalkwave rather than Stranger Tide, just in my opinion. Stranger Tide is still good, it's just not as good as Shockwaves. <clears throat> so, thank you guys so much for watching. I believe the universe, I want you to keep you can on. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me at Twitter or Zoom in the description down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and take care. But next time, I think that we're. That will be staying in the realm of comic books and manga by going to a manga series that people have, have always said about. And next time we're going to be dealing with some detective work, a death note, and some shinigamis.